This is Jorun, a subtly stylized version of Valiant Army's German longsword from the Craftsman series. I had to do a little digging to conclude which category she most resembles, but I now believe she fits quite nicely into Type 18B. Given the slender thrust focus blade of 91cm and total length of 120 as well as the diamond cross section and 200 grip, the sword falls somewhere in between Type 15A and 18B. While the blade length could fit into either the high end of 15A or low end of 18B, the hilt size, pommel complexity and overall design is more in line with 18B, and so I believe we can categorize her as such. If you're familiar with VA's work, you may have noticed that the crossguard is not standard issue on this particular model. While there's nothing wrong with the one that comes by default, back in 2021 I was really craving for a sword with an S-curve crossguard perpendicular to the blade. The closest thing I could find on Cult of Athena was the Albion Earl or Munich, both of which are monstrously beautiful. But settling for either of those would mean getting just a sword, and I do love my scabbards. So I sent an email to VA, asking if they could make their German longsword, which aside from the god looked very similar to the Albions, but with the same crossguard design as that of the Earl. They said yes, we can, and so the wait began. Then in October 2022, this thing finally arrived in my mailbox. I was quite anxious about unboxing it, as I had had no other affirmation than their word up until this point that the thing would come out looking okay. But that concern was quickly put to rest as I unpacked it, and it looked just about as I had imagined it. There seems to be a small difference in the middle section of the crossguard, where the central ridge on the Albion widens to a plane, this one stays one dimensional all the way. To me, this is not a concern, since we agreed from the very beginning that it was not going to be an exact copy of the Earth, and I still think it looks very good. One thing I was very particular about in my request was that the ends of the god wouldn't be chamfered down. I knew for a fact that they had two Irish ring sword variants in their catalogue with this design element, and I didn't want them to copy it over to my sword. As is hopefully made evident by this photograph, they heeded my request, and on the whole I am very pleased with their take on the custom guard design. That is not to say that everything was flawless in the execution though. For one thing, there is a small imperfection near the tunnel, where the blade protrudes. And more importantly, the assembly is a little bit off, in the sense that it's tilted ever so slightly in the blade profile plane. This results in one of the wings being closer to the tip, while the other is closer to the pommel. The difference is small enough that it took me months to notice, so my first thought was that it somehow happened during the testing session, but looking back at the shots from before that, I can see it there too now. It is a bit of a shame that the mounting wasn't more precise, as the hilt otherwise has a lot going for it. Anyway, getting back to the unboxing impression. The second thing that immediately occurred to me was how slim the scabbard was, in comparison to that of the warsword I already owned. It's way slimmer, and the imprints are much more distinct. It feels as if one could read the weapon's entire history simply by sliding a finger across its markings. I was a big fan of the warsword scabbard when it first appeared, but this one leaves an even better impression. That is as far as aesthetics go, anyway. One issue that has arisen with this one is that the two suspension straps have a tendency to move up and down the core, especially the one close to the top. On the Warsword, the straps were firmly seated into the leather wrap surrounding the core, but on this one they are simply tied around it. There are two elevated ridges in the core that are supposed to keep them in place, but they don't work perfectly, and it's happened more than once that the top strap has moved out of its intended position, causing instability. On the plus side, Valiant Armory had added the option for left hand draw on the product by the time I ordered this one, so unlike the Warsword from 2018, I can actually wear this one correctly. As for the rest of the hilt, it features a scent stopper or T-type pommel. There is a slight imperfection near the peen, where the pommel appears to have taken a blow in the process, and thus bears the same finish. I suppose that is near impossible to avoid with such a flat peen though. The grip I find very much to my liking both aesthetically and functionally speaking. I love the waist, and the leather is perfectly wrapped from start to finish. It's only a few centimeters longer than the one on the warsword, but that small amount of extra play for the hands makes a world of difference when handling the sword, allowing for much more flexibility. Thanks to the point of balance sitting just 9 centimeters from the crossguard, as opposed to the 13 on the warsword, and an 85% relative weight at just 1212 grams, this sword feels much more nimble and playful in the hands, further complementing the thrust-oriented nature of it. The fit is also an improvement over the warsword. It's tighter to begin with, but also more even, and looks about the same on both sides of the blade. 
Like all the other blades from the Craftsman series, it's made from 6150 spring steel. As best my eye can discern, it features a diamond cross section and tapers heavily in both dimensions toward the point. It came with pretty much a flawless finish and two sharp edges. Near the base on one side, VA has left their maker's mark. I was pleasantly surprised by just how well the cutting went, having first tried out the war sword. I'm still a novice cutter, so I'm not going to judge the sharpening job by my testing alone, but I can at least compare the two swords I have tried for myself, and I definitely had more success cutting with a German longsword. Stabbing bottles was no challenge for either of them, but since Joran handles so gracefully, I still prefer her for that as well. It's hard to get across how good the blade actually looks. The finish is completely uniform, and contains no imperfections visible to the naked eye. It is a true joy to look at, and perform beyond expectation in the bottle cutting session. Quite an impressive blade, I must say. The fittings were given a blackened finish, per the $125 add-on available on all of the products. The scabbard and grip were treated to a lighter version of the cocoa brown, and the belt was dyed black. I figured I should also take a minute to talk about their customer service in this video, so if all you wanted was to look at the sword, this is probably a good time to stop watching. For anyone interested in buying from VA, here follows my experience dealing with them. I initiated contact with them on the 26th of October in 2021, first ensuring that the request was feasible to begin with. Then after a few exchanges back and forth, and getting a couple more details down, I proceeded to place the order, all in the same day. The expected build time at this point was 6 to 12 months. Fast forward to the 10th of March 2022, nearly 5 months down the line. I send them an email asking if they have any update on the progress, as I have heard nothing so far. 30 minutes later, Sony gets back to me, saying that everything is done except for the custom card, and that he'll check in with the guy working on it. That all sounds very promising to me, as if the sword is nearly completed. After that, I heard nothing for 3 months, and on the 12th of June, I sent them another email. This got no response. Then on the 29th of August, I made another attempt to contact them, and was yet again unsuccessful. So on the 13th of September, I switched channels to Messenger and sent them a third message. This time, I finally got to reply, but it was the same thing they told me 6 months earlier, and there had seemingly been no progress in between. After that, only a few more weeks passed before I received an auto-generated notification about the sword being on its way. And on the 28th of October, one year and two days after placing the order, it finally arrived in my mailbox. While the wait time didn't meaningfully exceed what was communicated from the beginning, the responsiveness to my emails left a lot to be desired. The utter radio silence all the way from February until September really was a poor display. It also wasn't much different the first time around, when the Warsword was in production. I didn't hear a peep from August until March, despite sending two messages via their form. Only through Messenger was I able to reach them. They then said that there were issues with the form not delivering messages properly, and that I should resort to email or Messenger instead. While that solved the problem in 2019, it clearly wasn't sufficient now. Ironically, this has also resulted in them missing out on the payment for the custom guard. It was supposedly going to add another 150 US dollars to the total, but I never received an invoice for it. When I got the sword, I even reached out to them saying it had arrived and reminded them that I still hadn't fulfilled the payment, but again I got no response. That's sort of a win, I guess? As it stands right now, Joran is the crown jewel of my collection. Coming from the Craftsman series, she was twice the price of my war sword, but that feels warranted. The blade is top quality, and the leather on both the grip and scabbard is in a different class from before. But like I said, there are some imperfections in the hilt, and most notably the assembly of it. If that had been perfectly symmetrical, it would have boosted the overall impression a lot, and given it a near flawless feel. But in this state, there is still room for improvement. The sword cost 1345 US dollars in its standard configuration, but since the scabbard is included in that price, it cannot be directly compared to the Lockwood or Albion counterparts in the same range. Perhaps the closest competitor, for someone who's only interested in getting the actual sword, would be the Ringek, for $880. Settling for that instead would save a bit of money, and based on what I've heard about Albion, it could also imply slightly fewer flaws in the end result. Ultimately, it's up to each and every one to decide what they favor. 
VA has some strong selling points, and by far the weakest link right now is the lack of communication. They seem to have had a big upswing in product quality over the past years, with a focus on the Craftsman series and collaboration with Angus Trim. Hopefully the next big thing will take place in the communications department. Thanks for watching, once again, work us out.